we're going to go ahead and look at dividing, dividing polynomials. So first of all, we're going to start off with doing longhand division with numbers. Suppose we want to take 85 and divide it by 4. <coughs> 85 divided by 4, you put 85 on the inside, put 4 in front. You'd ask yourself, how many times does 4 go into 8? You put, say twice. So you put a 2 up there, you go 2 times 4, put that down on an 8th to get 8. Then you'd go ahead and take 8 minus the orange 8, get 0. You'd bring down the next term. And then you'd repeat. 4 times what gives you 5? Goes in there once. 1 times 4 is 4. Then you would subtract, and you would get 1. So we could say that 85 divided by 4 is either 21 plus 1 divided by 4, which is really your remainder over your divisor, or you could say it's 21, remainder 1. So we're now going to use that same process when we're dividing polynomials. So we're taking x to the 4th minus 16, and we're dividing it by this. So x to the 4th minus 16 needs to go inside your half box. We'll go x to the 4th, but you'll notice we're missing our cube, we're missing our squared, and we're missing our x to the 1st. So we need to put in 0x cubed, 0x squared, 0x to the 1st, all as placeholders so that everything lines up nice. I'm going to take what's in front or what I'm dividing by, and put that in front. If I was missing any terms there, I'd also put it in zero as placeholders. Then you look at the very first thing here, x squared times what gives me x to the fourth. You say that that's x squared. So I'm going to take this orange x squared times all three things in front. x squared times x squared. x squared times 3x. x squared times 1. Now, we had done subtraction on the last problem. However, keep in mind that 5 minus 3 is the exact same thing as 5 plus a negative 3. I find that if people think of it like this here, of adding the opposite, they make fewer mistakes. So I'm going to switch all my signs, and then I'm just going to add down x to the fourth plus negative x to the fourth is zero they cross out zero of these plus negative three of these is this zero of these plus a negative one of these and then we'll bring down our next term and now we just have to repeat x squared times what is three x cubed well that's just a negative three x so i'm going to take this green negative three x times all three things in front green negative three x times x squared that green negative 3x times 3x. Green x, or green negative 3x times the 1. Then I'm going to switch my signs and add. Negative 3x cubed plus 3x cubed is 0, so we don't have to write it. And if you are doing this correctly, your first terms here should always drop up. Negative 1 of the x squared plus 9 of the x squared. 0x plus 3x. Bring down the next term. And repeat. x squared times what is 8x squared? Well, that's just 8. So take this purple 8 times all three things in front. 8 times x squared. 8 times your 3x. 8 times the 1. Switch your signs and add. Now we're going to add down your 8x squareds drop, 3 of the x's plus a negative 24 of the x's, negative 16 plus a negative 8. So now we are done. We know we're done because the exponent on what we have here is just an x to the first, which is smaller than what we had here. So that means when your exponent gets to be smaller, that's your remainder. So, when we go ahead and divide these two, we get our quotient, and that's what we have up here on top, the orange, the green, and the purple. Plus, we're going to go our remainder, which is up there in black, divided by our divisor. That's what we were dividing by. 
So that's one way to look at it. If you multiplied both sides by what you were dividing by, your divisor, then you would just get your divisor times your quotient, because you'd have to multiply this whole thing by that. And then when you multiply this by that, they cancel the top and the bottom, leaving you only with your remainder. So depending upon the way your directions are asking, it may ask you to go ahead and divide this, or it may be looking for it to be written like this. Most of the time it will be like this here. Occasionally it will also ask you just to list the quotient and list the remainder, not to write it as your quotient plus remainder over divisor. So is 7 a factor of 63? Yes, because when you divide there's a remainder of 0. So on our last problem that we just did, is this a factor of this? No. And why? Because it had a remainder other than 0. So how do we know if something's a factor? Well, if you divide, if your remainder is 0. So there's a couple ways we could go ahead and do this problem here. You're asked to find f of 2. So you could just take 2, plug it in for each one of your x's, and then work it out. Now, there's a second way you can do that, and that's with longhand division. We know that x is what's in our parentheses, so x is 2. We're going to set this equal to 0, and that tells us what to put in front of our division. Now we can do our longhand division. x times what is this? We know that that's an x squared. Take that x squared times both of these in front, x squared times x, x squared times negative 2. Switch your signs and add. Our cubes drop. Negative 3 of the x squareds plus 2 of the x squareds is negative 1 of the x squareds. Bring down your next term. And repeat. x times what is negative x squared? Negative x. So take a green negative x times each one of these. Green negative x times x. Green negative x times negative 2. Then we're going to switch our signs and add. Our squareds drop 1 of the x's plus the negative 2 of the x's. Bring down your next term. Repeat. x times what is negative x? That's a negative 1. Take that black negative 1 times each thing in front. Switch your signs and add. And we get 3. Notice how what we got for a remainder is the exact same thing that we got up here. So that does come into play. You might be thinking, uh, that seems strange to have to do all that extra work to be able to figure that out. But it makes us realize that what we plug in and then simplify down and get out ends up being the remainder after you divide. And sometimes that remainder is helpful. So when you're looking only for the remainder, yes, you could do longhand division. There's also synthetic division that we'll be getting to, or you could just plug it in. Doesn't make a difference. You could also go ahead and decide if it's a factor. So basically, if you get a remainder of 0, you know it's a factor. So, let's go ahead and look at the zeros of this. You know that you can set it equal to 0, then you can factor it, set each factor equal to 0, and then you get your answers. That's what we've been used to doing. So here, it's kind of like a Jeopardy problem, where I give you the answers, you got to work backwards to the question. You're asked to find the function that has these zeros. So we start out with our answers. Now, when you go back here, you realize the first thing you did, or going backward, was to set it equal to 0. So subtract 2 from each side, add 1 to both sides, subtract 3 from both sides. When you look back here, you realize the two things that were equal to 0 is what went together in your parentheses to give you our problem. So the things that are equal to 0 is what we set equal to, or put in our parentheses, and go equal to 0. Now, however, we are looking for a function, not necessarily an equation. 
So I'm going to go ahead and set this equal to f of x. Now, could I go ahead and FOIL this out and get this here? Yes. Could I FOIL again and get this down here? Yes. If you wanted, you could just go f of x equals right here with your parentheses and you could have been done. Either one works. So let's take a look at synthetic division. Suppose we wanted to go back and do f of 2 again. Well, x is 2. That's what goes in your half box. What goes after your half box are just your coefficients. That means the numbers in front of your variables. There's a 1, negative 3, 1, and then we'll put our constant. So 1, negative 3, 1, and our constant. With synthetic division, we only do two things. We add and multiply. This plus nothing is still 1. Half box times what's in the bottom is what we multiply, and it tells us what to put here. Then we repeat. So we add down, we get negative 1. Half box times what's in the bottom tells us what to put here. And then we add down. Then we take half box times what's in the bottom tells us what to put here. And then we add down. So, you'll notice this last number right here is your remainder. So f of 2 tells you your remainder again, and the last number is the remainder. So what do these three numbers here correspond to? And they actually correspond to the coefficients of your quotient. So if you go back and look at that problem that we did, your quotient that you had on top would be a 1x squared minus x minus 1. So is z 3 a 0 of this? Well, basically we're wondering if we plug in 0, do we get out, or plug in 3, do we get out 0? Could you go ahead and plug in 3 here, here, and here? Yes, but it would be hard to do it in your head. We could actually do it this way. 4, 9, 4, negative 9, negative 8, negative 3 is what we would put over here. Then we want to repeat. Add down half box times what's in the bottom, we add down, half box times what's in the bottom, we add down, half box times what's in the bottom, we add down, we get out zero. So, is 3 a zero, or is x minus 3 a factor? And we would say yes, because we get out zero. So is it a factor? Yes, because our remainder is zero. So, two totally separate questions up here, but very much connected. Slightly different ways of looking at it.